So in our previous video, we installed the desktop environment into our Ubuntu server in order to be able to run the virtual machine manager GUI management tool. So once we do the and in that previous video, you saw our command. So once that gets done, we reboot and it boots back up into this, into our GUI environment. So I'm going to click on my account and go ahead and log in here real quick. There we go. Works better when you type your password correctly. So once I get logged in, I'm going to go ahead and skip through all of this stuff because I really don't care for this. All right. Now I want to open up my terminal and then I'm going to go ahead and install my virtualization manager software through the terminal. So I'm going to click on applications. I'm just going to search right here for terminal and here is my terminal application. Let's go ahead and see if we can bump this size up a little bit just to make it a little easier to look at these commands on your video. There we go. All right, so to install it, it's sudo apt install. And there are a couple of things we're gonna use. SSH ask pass and vert dash manager. So these are the two applications I'm gonna do, or the two packages I'm gonna do. There are all of our dependencies. I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and install them. And this does the installation. Now you could use the Ubuntu software manager and try to find it, find the, your virtualization manager software there. And that's fine. Uh, but since we know what they are and we've been doing everything else command line through the rest of the series, why not? Right. Okay. There we go. Now I installed it from my command prompt. So I am going to do a search for. So VIR, and here is my virtual machine manager software. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, it should connect to your local machine if everything is up and running just fine. Now, if it is not up and running, or if you're trying to manage a virtual machine manager, let me try this again. If it's not up and running, you'll need to get the uh, libvirt-d that we talked about in our previous video functional. If you're trying to connect to a remote one, then you'd go to file and add connection. And this will allow you to connect to a remote host over SSH. And, and then you'll be able to connect to that device remotely and manage the virtual machines remotely, which is great if you've got like an Ubuntu desktop system, because, you know, virtual machine manager is available for anything, uh, for any uh, Linux based system. So if you've got a virtual a Ubuntu desktop running as your workstation, you've got an Ubuntu server running in the other room, and you don't want to get up and walk back and forth all the time, you install virtual machine manager and connect to that uh, other one remotely. So I'm not going to go through a whole lot here. I just want to show you real quick, I can go to file, new virtual machine. And this is where I can start configuring my virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and do a network pixie boot. It's not going to work, but I really don't care at the moment. And then I'm going to put in the type of machine I want to put in a Windows virtual machine. And so I can do a Windows server or generic one, whatever. All of these, by the way, it does not force that operating system. This just sets some basic uh, options for your virtual machine. I'm going to choose generic just for the fun of it and move forward so I can set my memory. I can set my CPUs available. Let's double our memory, give it 20. Let me turn on my number lock. Uh, give it two CPUs. I can set the size of my disk. Uh, I can use, a, if I've got a previously established disk, I can use that. Obviously, 20 gigabytes isn't going to be enough for a Windows system, but that's okay. We're not doing it anyway. Give it a name. Select a network location. Here's one of the things I want you to see. By default, it does network address translation. So what that means is your virtual machines will be able to communicate with each other. And through network address translation, they'll be able to get out to the rest of the world. But because of its, ne its network network address translation, the rest of the world won't be able to get to them. So what you'll need to do is set up a um, set up a bridged network adapter. If you want to 
uh, do that. So we'll click finish and it'll create our virtual machine. And then it's actually going to complain that it can't boot off of it. But there you see how we can fairly easily build a virtual machine. Make that go away because I don't care. So now my virtual machine is up and running. Now, if I want to work with that virtual machine, double clicking on it, we'll go ahead and open up a connection to it. I can also right click and pause, shut down, delete, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and shut down this virtual machine. And then I'm going to double click on it again. That's not going to take that shutdown command. I'm going to have to force off. The shutdown tries to send a shutdown command to the operating system. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click it again. That opens it up. It's not running, right? So I can start it, pause it. But now that I have it down, I can look at virtual machine information. And I can configure my different settings here and adjust my virtual machine settings. I can also go to my virtual machine here, choose to clone, delete, uh, view the console, the details, the snapshots of the virtual machine, and send specific keys to the virtual machine. So a little bit different than if you're used to Hyper-V because you don't right click and edit the settings. You have to actually open it up and then go to the information or the graphical console. So this is how you're gonna manage that virtual machine in uh, Ubuntu using KVM. Okay, there is your quick introduction to using a virtual machine manager.